Hello and welcome to the All of God's Daughters channel. This is episode two in the four-part series on the book The Total Woman by Maribel Morgan, published in the 70s. And in the previous video, in part one, we talked about Accept Him. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to that video, I really recommend listening to it either, either after this video or um, prior to listening to this one. Um, just because they build on each other. So the first one lays the foundation for the second one, and the second one for the third one. You get the point. Um, so for this video, we will be talking about admire him. And Maramal Morgan mentions this to be admired as one of the basic needs that a man has. So she starts off by saying that women prefer love or we need love, but men want to be admired. So... She said that sometimes men seem to be empty emotionally or kind of void or like an empty shell almost. And many times it is because this void is not being filled. So it's not as easy for them to reach out and to be open and to give um, emotionally. <laughs> um, so that's just because maybe they haven't really had anybody admire them. And I'm going to add here that I think that to be a good leader, you need somebody who admires you because that gives you the self-confidence to believe in the decisions that you have made. So if you are constantly being criticized or maybe you have a history of criticizing yourself, then any decision you make will not really be set. You will be hesitant. You will wonder, is this the right thing? Is it not? Uh, and you will be like the Bible says, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. So I know it's it's not um, exactly speaking about the same thing. In the one, um, we're talking about doctrines in the Bible or just um, what you believe. But the same can be said for a double-minded man. So if, if he has no confidence, then any decision he makes will have a lot of questions tagged to it. And that is what we're trying to avoid. If we're going to be a helper, a good helper for a husband, we want to make sure that he turns out to be a confident man, um, not necessarily because of us, but um, he shouldn't be hindered by us. So if we are hurting him, if we are breaking him down and not providing this basic need, then he might turn out to be a double-minded man and you might end up looking at him thinking you're so unstable and find even more things to criticize. So um, if we just think of the health, the emotional health of a husband, this is something that is really important for him. And she goes on to say that we often want him to give emotionally before we are willing to fill this void. And she says here that this is the wrong approach. We should rather give first and then we will find that it's much easier for him to respond emotionally the way that we want him to respond. And in the first video, you can hear a lot about accept accepting him, where we spoke about um, if you treat your husband wrong in this um, regard, there's a bunny in my house. We have bunnies. And I don't know how she got in. I need to get her out quickly. I have opened the door for the bunny. And she will be out shortly. Um, okay. Now I forgot what I said last. Um, when you can have a man that's either passive aggressive or just plain aggressive because of how you approach him. And that is what we want to avoid. She says here that there is a difference between admiring and showing respect. And it's it's obvious, <laughs> but um, she, she does go on to speak about the Bible that says that we should reverence our husbands. And I would like to add here that respect is, let's think of the law. If you have respect for the law and you drive into, um, into town, you're not driving um, above the speed limit, you're not parking wherever you desire, you're driving on the right side of the road, you have a healthy respect for the law, so you are acting as you should because there's a type of fear that is um, linked to your behavior. But when it comes to reverence, there's also an emotion that, li that is linked to it. So it's not just in your head. It's not just, oh, this is the right thing to do. If I don't do this, there will be consequences and the consequences will be bad. And um, that's, that's just um, mental. It's not really a part of your emotional state, if I can put it like that. But when it comes to our husbands, there's a type of awe that we should have. We, we should be thinking, wow. And um, 
just a side note, don't marry somebody that you can't think wow of. If there's no wow, then don't marry him. It, it won't, it might, it might grow. But um, mostly when you when you live, live with somebody, you start noticing their errors. <laughs> and if there's no element of wow, it will be difficult to deal with all the ugh that you feel. And without being admired, he would probably have very low levels of motivation. Marilyn Morgan says that actually that he will have no levels of motivation. So, no motivation. I don't necessarily agree with that because I think that he will just go and find a different source of motivation and cut you off a bit. He will not be as healthy emotionally, but some men will lose themselves in their work. They will go as far as having an affair. I'm not saying that all men who have an affair is because a wife, um, there's a wife at home who don't admire him. Um, an affair is never justified, but this is something that we can think of, that if he's not being emotionally um, satisfied, his needs are not being met, then he might end up looking elsewhere. And um, it depends on the character that he has, of course, but we don't, we don't want to tempt him in that way. She speaks about a conflict that many married people have, and that is the question of who will give first. And I like the word give because it, it means to, to give, but it also means to bend. So if something gives, it, it breaks or it bends or it weakens, it loosens. Um, and I think that if we want a healthy marriage, we need to be able to give in both ways. So the first person to say, I'm not getting what I need. You're not getting what you need, but I'm not going to move until you give me what I need. Usually that's a stalemate. You're not, you're not going to move. <laughs> but if you say, okay, so something is wrong emotionally here and I'm not receiving what I need and I'm not giving what you want or what you need, but I will be the first. I will start looking for things to admire in you. If we have that mindset, then it will be a lot easier to move to emotional health in the marriage than if we just refuse to give. And Marimel Morgan says that every woman has the ability to help her husband grow greatly. She talks about the power of a compliment. I think that compliments and positive thoughts and positive thinking can be overrated. There is a certain level of um, positivity that's actually just been unrealistic. So it's not like you're throwing reality out of the window and like jumping into La La Land and making everything seem more beautiful than it is. Instead, you are putting on new glasses at which you look at your husband and say, or through which you look at your husband and say, I'm going to start looking for the good in you and I'm going to mention those things. So a compliment is not a lie. You are not just thinking of something that you wish your husband would do and then say, oh, this you are like this and that and that. And he really isn't. Um, both of you would know that it's not a sincere compliment. It's not something that's true. And that's not a compliment. That might actually be manipulation. And we also want to avoid that. So when we talk about complimenting our husbands, admiring them, reverencing them, having all, it is not for us to get something. Okay, good marriage is, of course, but um, that's for both parties. And it's also in the will of God. So I'm talking about having selfish desires. We are not doing this to gain something or to um, one-up our husbands or, you know, to kind of have something on him because we're the better person now. It's not like that at all. Um, instead, we, we do this because we love them. And love also sometimes means sacrifice. So it's not a selfish endeavor. It's not, um, it's, it's for the benefit of our husbands. So the, the compliments that we give them is genuine. It is just for the sake of fulfilling his his needs or meeting his emotional needs. That's it. That is that is the motivation, that is the end goal, and that is all there is to it. If there's more to it, you might end up getting some troubles. If he picks up on the fact that you're trying to change him or that you're actually just manipulating him with the compliments or um, you are trying to get him to do something differently, then the compliments will not mean as much and they might even do harm. So genuine compliments um, based on genuine facts and um, not made up, not to manipulate, not to lie. And also um, 
and also to make sure that you're really seeing him. So we spoke about accepting him. If you don't accept him, like really who he is, if you compliment the image that you have of him instead of who he is, if you give him a compliment that he actually knows he's not like that, it will hurt him. I didn't want anger some men. It, it depends on, on what type of man he is. But anger sometimes is just the fruit of um, pain. Not always, but sometimes. She talks about even complimenting his body. It can be difficult for Christians to talk about this because um, we are taught from a very young age to keep purity in mind and to be chaste. But you're married and you're allowed to say, I love your hands. You have beautiful shoulders. You look so strong. You know, just complimenting his body is also important. And it might be if your husband has a few issues or maybe you've been so cynical and so um, judgmental that when it comes to his character, you're not at the point where you can find something good to say. Starting with his appearance can be easy. Maybe he let go of it. Maybe he's not the most muscular man you've ever met. Or maybe he is a bit fat. Or maybe he's too skinny. You can compliment things like the size of his hands, um, you know, the strength of his arms, the color of his hair, how his eyes look, the shape of his lips. There's many things that you can look at and just start practicing, getting used to giving him compliments. And once you're kind of used to complimenting, oh, you look so nice in that suit, or oh, those pants make you look really strong. Once you just get used to mentioning the good things, then you can start adding genuine compliments based on his character and his acts or um, his kindness towards you. You can say things like, oh, thank you so much for the good advice that you gave me. You're so wise. And if you've never given him a compliment and you start just like bombing the compliments in his face, he might get shocked and he might not receive it as well. So starting small, if if you are already married, maybe, and you're listening to this, starting small can also help him is up to the new way of being treated. He might be thinking, what are you after? What's up? And he might get suspicious. And if you are actually trying to manipulate him, then compliments after that will also not feel the same. So we, we don't want to use compliments for that. I don't know if you're seeing bunnies in the background, but I left the door open and there's a lot of bunnies in the house now. She encourages women to look for the manliest qualities in their husbands and to compliment those. She also gives an example of a really skinny man who didn't exercise and then his wife um, listened to her teachings and she ended up going to her husband and holding his skinny arm and saying, oh, you're so strong, and then he started exercising. Now, I think that that borders a bit on lying, but maybe he was a strong skinny man. Who knows? Um, but it's still a good thing. Most of us, we're just normal women with normal amounts of women's strength. And our man can generally just do a bit more. So compliment that. If you're moving around in the house and, you know, you're picking up something heavy, call him over and ask him to help you carry it and compliment his strength. Just a, a side note. So she, she's just mentioned this example of how this husband then eventually started exercising. He just needed somebody to acknowledge the fact that he is strong and that gave him the motivation to be stronger or to want to be stronger. Then she goes on and talk about men who struggle with pride. So pride can be a difficult thing because we don't always know what the root of it is. Or maybe it looks like pride and it's actually pain, but it can be mixed with pride. So it can be complicated. But many women would say, why do I need to compliment my husband? Why do I need to admire him? He already thinks too much of himself. He needs to be brought down to earth, put on his place. Somebody needs to fix the way he sees himself because he just thinks he's all that and he's not. And I think that even if your husband is like that, he might still have an emotional need that is unmet, that prevents him from meeting your emotional needs. And also just because it's a right thing to do. So... I don't mean um, complimenting your husband's sin or encouraging him to be his worst self, but um, it's the right thing to do to not criticize your husband. And instead of criticizing, like I said in the previous video, um, withholding love can mean criticizing. And in the same way, giving love can mean admiring and um, respecting and complimenting and um, just saying those things that we are sometimes too stiff to say 
because we're not really sure how it will be received or if maybe it will make him worse. And he might be acting that way because he feels empty inside and he feels alone and he feels as if he's a failure. And he might be reacting badly because he just doesn't see himself as a success. And you will, um, and the way you treat him might just change that for him. She goes on to say that when you start doing this, when you start giving your husband compliments, just keep in mind that there might be some things that he feels really self-conscious about. So maybe he's bald or maybe, um, maybe he has a scar on his face and that's also the example she gives. Or, you know, maybe he isn't the tallest guy ever. Maybe he is short and you mentioned something about the length of his legs. That might hurt him. So also just taking note of his vulnerabilities is a good idea. And at first you can try to either avoid them or in this example, she says that this woman complimented the skull that her husband had and said that she found it very manly or masculine and she also gives the example of a wife that tells her husband that he got really fat and bold and the husband's response was listing her errors and <laughs> i think that that is a natural response i spoke about that in the previous video as well and we we want to avoid doing this we don't want to give them ammunition and hurt them so we also shouldn't have a mix you can't Tell him how wonderful he is the one moment and then the next moment tell him how fat he is. So she says there's not enough time in life to be focusing on, on the flaws and the weaknesses of others. She says that our time is best spent focusing on the strengths and the goodness of others. She also talks about um, an older lady. Ooh, that's a bunny. <laughs> Whose husband never received any admiration from him. So she never really verbally admired him. And um, how when she gave him a compliment, when she tried this, he cried. Um, and the healing in their marriage could finally start. Mm -hmm. She says that a marriage should never be stagnant. It should always be exciting. It should be growing. And that it is our responsibility to make sure that it does. And she says that in the days where... You know, you had a long day, you were tired. Maybe your husband had a long day, he was tired. These are the days that we should especially focus on this because that might just be what keeps him going, knowing that there's somebody at home that cheers him on. And I think that anybody that has lived in the grown-up world for long enough would know that imposter syndrome is real. And many times we feel that we are not good enough or we try our very best and we are afraid that somebody would call us out and say, you're so bad at what you do, you're such a fraud. And we shouldn't forget that our husbands feel this way too. And when they can come home to somebody who genuinely sees their strengths, genuinely admires them and accepts them, after a difficult day in the real world, um, a good home is also the real world, but I mean the, the tough, life, the battle out there, surviving, keeping your job, having a boss that maybe um, called you in to tell you how horrible you've been doing, just having somebody at home to hold you and hug you and say, it's all right, you're doing well, not as a lie, truthfully, <laughs> could help him to recover from that and can help him to press forward and not have a breakdown, not become depressed. And she says that, if, if you nag or if you hurt your husband, you might end up demotivating him so much that he would rather not work, rather not be there for his family. And she says even if there's some bitterness that already grew, this admiration is what he needs to get back in action if he maybe has lost his motivation for trying. So she says that behind every great man you'll find a great woman and that that woman is somebody that who is ready to love and also ready to meet his needs. She says that there are exceptions to this, um, but mostly very successful men have somebody who believes in them. She says that our desires called out, you have to love me, meet my needs. But love calls out, allow me to meet your needs. She says, if you're married, you can practice this. If not, keep this in mind. 
make a mental note, never forget it. She says that give your man a genuine compliment and see how his cup overflows with joy. She concludes the chapter by talking about nagging versus admiration and how what we wanted to accomplish by nagging would actually have been the fruit of receiving admiration. So instead of focusing on the weaknesses of your husband, try to focus on the strengths and prevent yourself from nagging and instead teach yourself to admire.